X-Men, the official game also known as X3, the official game is the name of Activision's three tie-in video games to the 2006 film X-Men, The Last Stand. The game covers the events of the films X2 and X-Men, The Last Stand, specifically following the characters of Wolverine, Iceman, and Nightcrawler. It also bridges the gap between the two films, explaining why Nightcrawler is not present for The Last Stand, and also introduces new foes to the X-Men film canon, such as Hydra. The game was released on the PlayStation 2 Xbox, Xbox 360, developed by Z-Axis, Nintendo GameCube, ported by Hypnos, Microsoft Windows, ported by Beenix. Another game altogether was developed for the Game Boy Advance by WayForward Technologies, and a third game was developed for the Nintendo DS by Amaze Entertainment. X-Men, the official game uses several voice actors from the X-Men film franchise. From the films, returning are Hugh Jackman, Alan Cumming, Sean Ashmore, Patrick Stewart, Tyler Mayne, and Eric Dane. X-Men, the official game, along with most other games published by Activision that had used the Marvel license, was delisted and removed from all digital storefronts on January 1, 2014. Topic. Gameplay Players control the actions of several X-Men related characters, most notably Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Iceman, as they uncover a plot to eradicate mutants. Sometimes, another X-Man will help the player's character battle. The Nintendo DS game features Magneto as a playable character, while the Game Boy Advance version features Colossus as a playable character. Many agree that Wolverine is the only useful character in the Game Boy Advance game which allows players to cycle through characters at will as he is the only one who can recover from damage. Topic: <laughs> Consoles. Wolverine's levels involve fighting hordes of soldiers armed with weapons. He can retract his claws, but any time a button is pressed, they are extracted. Wolverine heals minor wounds, reflected as yellow on his life gauge, but when his minor wound damage empties, all wounds are considered major, taking off his actual life bar. Wolverine can only heal major damage if he is not engaged in combat at the time. Wolverine can't target lock like his allies, he can only block, which can fend off weak attacks only until it is built up. Wolverine, after he has attacked for a time, builds up a fury bar, which when activated increases his healing rate, and his strength. It also changes his attack's appearances. Nightcrawler's levels involve mostly platforming missions, running along pipes in the ceiling, and teleporting. Nightcrawler can teleport to any area within his visual range. Like Wolverine, Nightcrawler heals by holding down a button, only Nightcrawler constantly takes life gauge damage, and when he heals, it is called Shadow Meld, or Shadow Aura. A nod to the comic books, Nightcrawler becomes invisible in shadow. Nightcrawler can teleport behind and combo attack several foes during a brawl. Iceman's levels most closely resemble flight sim games similar to Star Wars, Rogue Squadron as he continuously rides on his trademark ice slide. Iceman creates an icy path in front of him, flying through the air while shooting his ice beam and ice projectiles. Iceman's attacks are an ice beam, which cools off fires and damages foes, frost shield, which will cancel any damage he takes while it is up and Hailstorm, which is his main attack, hurling several balls of ice at targets. Iceman will heal automatically as long as he doesn't incur damage for an amount of time. The player must keep up a quick speed when sliding, as slowing down too much will knock Iceman off the slide. Topic. Plot During a session in the Xavier Institute's Danger Room, Wolverine battles his rival, Sabretooth, and ultimately ends up losing the session, though he had been saved by the timely arrival of Iceman, who was there so that Cyclops could train him, but is too crippled with grief to do so this is in reference to Jean Grey's apparent death in X2, X-Men United. After Wolverine trains Iceman in the Danger Room, Professor X warns Wolverine against trying the Danger Room on Danger Level 7. Again, before asking the X-Men to return to Alkali Lake to retrieve irreplaceable parts to Cerebro. Nightcrawler infiltrates the remnants of William Stryker's base with his teleportation ability, since the weapons systems were somehow operational. Once inside, the X-Men discover a group of agents called Hydra looting the base. 
Nightcrawler and Colossus go to find the Cerebro parts while Wolverine and Storm investigate HYDRA's presence. Wolverine and Storm discover that Stryker had been building giant robots called Sentinels as another plan to eradicate Mutantkind. Storm is abducted by Lady Deathstrike and Wolverine pursues her, eventually rescuing Storm. Nightcrawler is plagued by visions of Jason Stryker, who reminds Kurt he left him to die. Nightcrawler retrieves the Cerebro parts, battling a Sentinel in the process. A massive Sentinel the Master Mold is activated and rises from Alkali Lake. The X-Men and Lady Deathstrike escape, Wolverine attaches himself to Deathstrike's helicopter to follow her while the other X-Men return to the Institute. Iceman stops Pyro from triggering a meltdown at a nuclear power plant while Storm and Nightcrawler stop multiple man from blowing up a bridge. This storyline is somewhat picked up in X-Men, The Last Stand, when Magneto and his new brotherhood free multiple man from the prison convoy. Meanwhile, Wolverine follows Deathstrike and her Hydra agents to Tokyo. Wolverine learns that Deathstrike and Hydra are working for the Silver Samurai. After battling the legions of Hydra forces and killing Deathstrike again, Wolverine confronts Silver Samurai. Samurai reveals that Hydra helped Striker build the Sentinels, not realizing he planned to turn them against mutants. Silver Samurai himself is a mutant, and the Master Mold's activation was a mistake. After defeating Silver Samurai, Wolverine learns that Hydra has a device in Hong Kong that can stop the Master Mold, where the Master Mold is currently heading. Wolverine informs Professor Xavier, who contacts Magneto fearing the X-Men cannot stop the Sentinels alone. Magneto and Sabretooth travel to Hong Kong to help the X-Men. Xavier also reveals that Jason Stryker is still alive, his psyche now fractured into two halves, a good half who has been appearing to Nightcrawler and an evil half that is controlling the Master Mold. He states that another of his students had a similar problem, referring to Jean Grey, Phoenix. The X-Jet is shot down by Sentinels upon its arrival in Hong Kong. Iceman battles Sentinels and recovers HYDRA's device. Magneto arrives and uses the device to incapacitate the Master Mold, which crashes to the ground, but his helmet is knocked off of his head and Magneto is subdued by Jason's telepathic powers. Nightcrawler disables the Master Mold's control center, guided by Jason's good half, who helps point the way through the maze of the Mold's body. Nightcrawler disables the Master Mold's neural net, changed by Jason to look like a demonic realm. Meanwhile, Iceman destroys the core of the Master Mold and Wolverine in another of Jason's hallucinations fights several feral clones of himself, emerging victorious. Nightcrawler attempts to save Jason as the Master Mold begins to collapse, but Sabretooth abducts Jason and attempts to make his escape. Wolverine tracks Sabretooth's scent and confronts him while Kurt escapes with Jason. The two have a vicious battle, ending with Logan throwing Sabretooth from a great height to be impaled below. Jason dies, thanking Nightcrawler for saving him. Magneto leaves, vowing that his next encounter with the X-Men will be as an enemy. Back at Xavier's mansion, Nightcrawler tells Xavier he does not want to be an X-Man, for their lives are too violent and he is a peaceful man. Xavier tells him he is always welcome in the mansion, and Kurt leaves, which explains his absence in X-Men, The Last Stand. Meanwhile, Cyclops goes to Jean Grey's house and sees her, apparently still alive, with her power spiraling out of control, resulting in her shutting the door on him. The game ends with Cyclops begging to be let inside. This occurrence foreshadows the events of X-Men, The Last Stand. Later in the film continuity, the Silver Samurai, Trask Industries and the Sentinels made appearances in The Wolverine and X-Men, Days of Future Past. Topic. Development Zach Penn and Chris Claremont co-wrote the story for the game. Penn is the co-writer of X-Men, The Last Stand, and Claremont was a longtime writer of the X-Men comic books, establishing the personae for many of the new X-Men team, which featured then new members Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Banshee, and Wolverine. Claremont is perhaps best known for the Dark Phoenix saga. Topic. Reception X-Men, the official game was met with very mixed reviews upon release. 
GameRankings gave it a score of 51.65% for the DS version, 52.91% for the Game Boy Advance version, 54.26% for the GameCube version, 54.60% for the PC version, 56.31% for the PlayStation 2 version, 57.13% for the Xbox version, and 55.41% for the Xbox 360 version. On Metacritic, it has a score of 50 out of 100 each for the DS and GameCube versions, 55 out of 100 for the GBA version, 52 out of 100 each for the PC, PS2 and Xbox 360 versions, and 53 out of 100 for the Xbox version. On the consoles and PC, some of the problems cited were repetitive gameplay, poor enemy AI and the fact that the Xbox 360 version looked similar to the other console versions despite the better hardware. Detroit Free Press gave the Xbox 360 version 3 stars out of 4 and said, I'd be happier if Cyclops were at my fingertips, too. But all in all, the variety these three X-Men provide is adequate for one little video game. The Times gave the game a mixed review and stated that, Nice graphics and smooth gameplay are no substitute for imagination. However, the AV Club gave it a D and stated that almost everything about this movie cash-in is cheap and incompetent, from the short, forgettable levels to the poor control system to the hand-crampingly repetitive action. As for the handhelds, the DS version was considered repetitive and hard to control, and the GBA version, a by-the-book platformer. <laughs>